Good Boy, My Life in Seven Dogs is a memoir. It's a measure of my life that's told in dogs. In particular, it's seven dogs I owned before transition, before coming out as transgender. There are times in my life when I can't even remember what it was like to be the person I used to be, but I've never forgotten the dogs. It's funny, when we talk about dogs, you know, often we are, our hearts sing and our eyes glow and we talk about um, how their, you know, their love for us is so unconditional. But in my experience, what's unconditional really is the love that we have for them. And sometimes that love is, uh, it's, it, you, we really get to try the meaning of the word unconditional because some of the things that our dogs do are really terrible. Um, but I, I had another dog who was not a bad dog, but who was certainly um, given to uh, operating outside the law sometimes. I remember one time Indigo, who was a black lab, I came home to find that she'd eaten a 10-pound bag of flour and that there were white flour paw prints like everywhere, including incredibly on top of the kitchen countertops. And I just looked at this dog with an expression of, what has been going on here? And she just looked back at me like, I have no idea what you're referring to. I don't know if we show the truest versions of ourselves to our dogs, but I know that our dogs love us for who we are, not for, what's, what's that song by Sly and the Family Stone? I love you for who you are, not for who you think you need to be. Um, I remember um, one of the first times I ever came down the stairs on farm, you know, looking kind of like I look right now. Um, we, had a, we had a yellow dog named Lucy, and she, for a few seconds, had no idea what was going on, and she just kind of looked at me like, what? And she growled a little bit, and then she looked at me like, oh, it's only you. And it would be nice if some of the human beings in our lives were that receptive to change. Sure, there's a moment of what, but then shouldn't we all quickly move to that understanding of the world and say, of course, it's only you. So each of the dogs that I've owned has taught me something a little different about love and also loss. Uh, from my first dog, Playboy, I, who was just this kind of just incorrigible soul, whom everyone hated except my father, what I learned from Playboy, which is a great name, was that it's, it's okay if everyone hates you as long as you're really loved by one person. Um, my next dog, uh, whose name was Sausage, it was a dog I loved when I was 11 years old, but by the time I was like 16 or 17, my dog was kind of a loser. She was fat and kind of dumb and kind of sleepy. And what I learned from Sausage is that sometimes love can change and that it can be hard to keep a promise at one age that you made at another. Um, I had another dog named Matthew, Matt the Mutt, who was just a sex machine. Uh, he would run around the house and he would just kind of hump everything, including my grandmother's leg. And amazingly, my grandmother seemed to actually enjoy this. She would just, I remember her saying, he's got more spunk than your grandpa. <laughs> um, so from Matt the Mutt, I learned that sometimes the happiest people are the ones who make everyone else's lives impossible. Um, so each of my dogs taught me something different about love, but I think they all taught me in, in some ways a similar message about loss, which is that the, the things you love, the ones you love, both dogs and people, are really only here for a little while. And it's like that Shakespeare sonnet, the one that ends, um, this thou perceivest which makes thy love more strong, to love that well, which thou must leave ere long. Sometimes the, the knowledge that the thing that you love is not a thing you're gonna get to keep forever 
means you can just give yourself into the thing you love. Give give your whole heart away because you you may not get another chance. And that's true of of dogs, and but of course it's true of humans too.